Hello, guys. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Good evening, teacher. Hi, welcome, guys. How are you? Doing great. How was your? Tell me about it. So I'm really sorry because it got some inconvenience with my laptop, and I was like trying to, you know, trying to switch, you know, the screen and it's like kind of block, but I just could at the end to fix it. This is a kind of extenuated circumstance, but the most important is we're already here to learn and practice. And also, let me share with you right now my presentation. Um, I'm actually about to to check here. The, let's see my screen because, as I told you, it was it was frozen the my screen while well, still no so common. Perhaps when the computer was. Um, update and the systems per, could happen so but I was just like trying to and um focus about that so we're actually you know about to share with you right now guys to also my screen uh, so I told you so bad because I was like trying to to you know you know present my my stuff here and um you know external sequence stresses about my computer but let's see what's going on here so let me share with you guys right now. Sport. Okay, before we start the class, I just want to ask you guys, so what we did yesterday? So who wants to, you know, tell me about what we did? I need a volunteer to, you know, remember what activities that we developed in the last class. Who wants to break the ice? Yes. Remember that in this class we need to speak. We need to produce the language like we always do. Well, you 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 know this more than me because this class is like hundred percent active. So like the traditional ways, like for example, in um, the teacher becomes the facilitator, and the students will become the you know the starters. The the main the most important in this class is you guys. So that's why if you practice, if you speak in a class, you maximize your knowledge and at the same time, you feel uh, more confidence to talk. Remember that I always said that there are some students that they participate all the time, but also there are some students that we don't usually listen to them too often talking, just in the breaker rooms. But uh, my recommendation is like, try to practice, you know, try to take a short time to talk. And uh, that's why it's um, necessary that you can also have the freedom to talk. This is your class. So you also have the, the chance to, you know, to express yourself, to talk, and also work a lot, right? That's one of the points. Let's see. Okay, so nobody? Somebody wants to tell me what we did yesterday? Yes, someone? Hello? Yes, a volunteer to tell me what we did in the class yesterday. We cannot we cannot start without giving a feedback. So that's why I need to oh, come. Yes. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Welcome. How are you? Very fine. Happy for today is Friday. Yeah. It's <laughs> Friday. So it's is is today the Black Friday? Do you know? Yes. Oh my god. So that was like um the people are crazy for you. Yes, and I have a question. So the, the prices are better, are lower, or at the end, the same prices? What do you know about it? I believe the same prices. The same <laughs> prices, oh, bad. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Well, I, uh, there are uh, a website uh, called comercomercomer.com. And in this website, you can... Uh, 
trap the, the, the price of the product, what you want. But uh, the, the only uh, uh, only Amazon prices. Okay. If, if you wanna buy something. And, and the prices are accessible, are expensive or cheap. So there, or you can see the real prices online, right? This is online. Yeah. Um, depending the, the the seller. So there, so that means that there is an advantage if you look for it in that website, right? Yes, you you can track the price in in the time. For example, what the price uh, the last year. All, all day so. and it's very easy to use okay. it is very interesting yeah of course i mean you can also not necessarily today because it's black friday so you can also uh look for better prices every day every day like you can see in the website well you know uh, rafael knows about it that's cool yeah it's true uh, uh some things i i buy it uh and many things who was a a good price and no necessary is black friday oh, okay some some interesting right so, yeah so we can think about it especially we want to get some uh good bargains you know good products so we can also look for that way so that's nice yes okay thanks thanks for this detail all right so yes we, we also were talking about millennials. Well, uh, talking about technology is an advantage of millennials, right? Because we are familiar with, te with technology. We're familiar with, um, with the advantages of technology and also we can uh, take advantage about that. Uh, people from previous generations who said yesterday, it was like they were um, kind of um, a little worried uh, Oh, they did things. Um, it took more time for them to do, but now with technology, it's everything easy. You know, the platforms, the programs, the, also the applications are nowadays are very nice to use. And what I'm telling you this one because, for example, somebody was telling me that they wanted to study English, and also I recommend some applications that can help them to learn. And they were saying like, "Oh, I know this application. I can use that. All right, that's cool." But, and I was thinking when I learned English like many years ago, and we didn't have uh, applications to learn English. We didn't have online dictionaries or trisaurus. We didn't have platforms to learn English because the technology was like trying to uh, update. So talking about the past until this time, we are as millennials adapted to technology. So we can combine technology with things and also we have better results. So there are different advantages. Well, today we have a great topic called how millennials the characteristics influence the workplace. Yeah, it, millennials give a plus to the area of the workplace. We're talking about there are good people um, in, in the sessions we talked last time. Uh, there were some um, millennials that they have a great connection, a lot of energy motivation skills to do a great job in, in our place and at the same time they can become leaders they can become um you know facilitators of progress in every company or department so i mean uh, there are some places in which people say that millennials are unstable because they were a kind of job hoopers because they be switching the job every two years but they are proficient also they are very skillful they are smart and also with dreams and goals to learn and do a, a better job. We also said in the last class that uh, specifically one student told us that uh, this is this um, it, it is important to encourage the employees, millennials employees, because they are looking for progressions, they are looking for opportunities, they are looking for motivation, enthusiasms. When you say someone in the company, hey you have done a great job. Congratulations, because you're incredible. Hey, how can you do that? Without you, this will be impossible. So it's most of the time we praised, you know, we encouraged people to do a great job. So that's what we talk about. 
okay, so that's why the topic we have here is like how millennials characteristics influence the workplace. And we're in session 19, guys. Imagine we until now we have 19 sections. So we have been like working a lot since the very beginning. And remember that, let's see, I think we're about to finish the next Monday from this week to the other one because we are like 20, 25 sessions. So that's mean that we have one week, specifically six days to finish this level. So how do you feel guys about this level, this model one? How do you feel? Because it's, uh, every level is a little different. And also uh, because you come from an intermediate English level to advanced, what? How do you feel, Emerson, about this this time that we have been working here, about your English level? Well, I have a feeling the motion or finish the this this level they increase my abilities to speak. I know I notice the advanced uh, habit in the language. Yeah, there's really bad level um, because in, perhaps in previous levels, we were like uh, working with different contents in English, but in a minor level, but in comparison to advanced, that like, we don't have to speak Spanish because we don't need it. Also, we need to know about new vocabulary and expressions that can help us to learn uh, everything in English. So we had to understand this part. Sifrida, what do you think about this level? was better than the last one. <laughs> okay, speechless. Okay, we understand, right? Uh, a, little, a little speechless, right, that's cool. So let's move on to the next part right now to the, um, to the class. We're gonna start with the first slide we have here and let's see what's going on. So just giving a feedback about millennials and also help deal with them in a, in a good way. So. We're going to watch a following video right now. And also we're going to try to watch the video and try to express if you agree or disagree with the speaker. So uh, this video, it takes um, a kind of long time. I'm just going to share with you right now this part. And also but the most important thing, I want you to focus about grammar, uh, pronunciation, because it's very important. You listen to the accent of a speaker. So the pronunciation is very important. Focus about the way the speaker talks. And there's an advantage that in the video, you can also see uh, kind of subtitled. So it's um, interesting because you can also see what, well, what the person is saying and also combined with the vocabulary is very important. So let's see what's going on here in this part. And I'm just going to, well, share with you right now the link. Uh, this video is related to, um, this is why you don't succeed. Simon uh, Sink on the millennials generation. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Um, let me see. This video takes a long time, but it's really very, very interesting. So that's why I'm just gonna give the, um, let's see, to everyone. Let's see, to the video, two minutes, one second. Let's see, okay, um, can you see the instructions? Can you see the instruction on the chat? Can you see the instructions? So I will, I will send the link. The video takes too much time, but that's why I'm gonna give you a specific time to watch the video. When I say stop, we're gonna be like trying to interact according to the video, if you agree or disagree about what the person is saying. So that's why I want you to like uh, focus about what the person is saying. And then we're going to socialize here in the class about this part. So are you ready? Yes, teacher. Perfect. Let's do it. Let's listen and practice.
Okay, two more minutes, and then we're gonna start the like, socializing. The, the the most important part, as I told you, the goal was not to like uh watch all the video because it's uh, a little long, but at least with the most important points about what you understood related to that one, so it will be important in that case. Well, this video is very interesting. Um, it has some um valuable points to discuss, and also some things that we have to ev evaluate and also taking advantage. First one is about attitude. It summarizes in the attitude, in the personal goals, the use of technology, mass media, and also some uh, possible ways to support millennials. So the, the for the points that I have already showed, like the first one is like to know about them, uh, discuss about some uh, skills that they possess, the, the situation about technology, social media, in advice to help in, in this one. So I would like to ask you, and, in, and it's on uh, volunteers. So you activate your microphone and talk. So what do you understand about the, the part you watch in the video? What, what you sold, or what you understood they were talking about, or the, the host was talking about? So what do you what do you understood about this speech? I understood this federation is considered lazy and lazy. Entitled. Lazy. Oh, okay. All right. Lazy. Lazy. The matter of a period of time, uh, but. He he talked about the uh, four topics different in parenting, technology, in patients have the person and environment uh, develop the, the person. It means I consider this one person have a different qualities and abilities um, to develop different activities, but sometimes they uh, consider uh, this type, this type of person uh, very comfortable in the situation. Uh, comfortable. Comfortable in the situation they can, it can handle. Okay, I understand that. Thank you so much, uh, Emerson, because you always participate. And also you talk about some valuable points corresponding to millennials that we're gonna take a short time to like uh, analyze some valuable points of this one. Thank you for that. Okay, somebody else would like to give um, you know, personal opinion about what you understood of the video or perhaps in a specific point mentioned in this conversation. Okay, someone else? Okay, someone else? Opinions about the video? Me teacher. Thank you. Uh, the host said some stereotypes uh, of millennials, such as uh, lazy, self title and others. And they said, and he said the other problem to compound 
the situation is that we we are growing up in Facebook, Instagram world, uh, and he said, uh, we are good at putting filters on things. We are good to show people the life is amazing, even though uh, I'm depressed. But this situation is uh, highly, highly addictive. Uh, just if you can live the your um, addictions, <laughs> no, no. addictions, bad ah. habits. Okay, is if you can live bad habits such as a Facebook, Instagram, uh, it's complicated because it's an addiction. Yeah, there are some habits. I mean, the perhaps we have like after, you know, doing a lot of things like, you know, social media, it's like very common nowadays. And perhaps, as you said, maybe it's addictive, right? <laughs> a little bit. Just that. Oh, thank you so much, Nelson. Yeah, and we're going to be talking about the, you know, the how addictive could be social media. I was like speaking with a friend of mine and she was like, I asked her, how was she? And she told me that she was uh, watching TikTok, for example. And she said that when she does at home watching TikToks, she can take like around two, three hours doing that. That's incredible. I mean, to spend, spend time in entertainment, like TikToks, videos, and some other things like, you know, people are... Uh, feel attracted to those kind of uh, social media things. So that's why it, it, this is one of the points related to this. Someone else would like to give an opinion about it? Uh, someone else? Okay, so let's analyze some valuable points related to this uh, kind of you know video, this conversation. And the first point that perhaps we need to discuss is about uh, you know challenges. People say that this generation, many of the people are depressed by different circumstances, but I don't think it's specifically for millennials. This could happen in all kinds of generations. Depending what they have experienced, the situations, it's we could be a general in a way. So it's something that we need to focus. The number two is about social media. I would like to ask you, how, how often do you watch social media? Like two hours a day, three hours a day, one hour a day. So tell me, Juan Carlos uh, Herrera. Hi. Mm -hmm. Um, hi, hi, teacher. Do you do you watch my, social media? Do you are you like checking your social media, like uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, or some other websites? Uh, yes, I um, all days uh, I see social every. media, but uh, every day, every day, yes. But but it's my for my job. It is, oh, okay. uh, no no personal uh, social media, but. Uh, Yes, related with my job. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in that case, it's not related to entertainment, right? Because it's, it's your responsibility. It is, oh. It's correct, yes. Correct. And what about, for example, platforms in which you can also watch uh, videos or some other things uh, like TikTok? Do you, do you watch that or you check those websites? Uh, for example, LinkedIn, when I 
uh, I I find or, or, or I look a, a, a people for a job. Uh, for example, um, the you do for some uh, resolution problems, for example. Um, um, Facebook is for a uh, uh, Facebook and in LinkedIn it is for for the the company have a, a, a the or use this social media and is is an um, obligation for us <laughs> uh, send information or 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 share information through this platform. Okay, that's that's good, mm -hmm. right? So in that case, mm -hmm. it's um important, you know, to yes, you know, to investigate because related to your job, by the way, right? So mm -hmm. this is another situation related to social media. It's like uh, we're talking about people uh, feel attracted to spend like one or two, three, four hours on social media, like Facebook and some other uh, pages. And uh, mm -hmm. this is one thing that the the speaker was criticizing, that sometimes they, instead of doing something very valuable or taking advantage of a time, they prefer to be looking for some other things. Let's see. We're going to ask to see Frido. Hi, Sifrido. Hello, teacher. Uh, do you check your social media? Um, yes, every day, I think. Every day, how often do you, you spend uh, checking those like pages, like one hour a day, two, two hours more? Probably a little bit more than one hour. Usually right. I check it in the morning, uh, at midday, and at night. Or to check like news or if something happened or I'll get some information about it. So we're talking about two hours a day or a little bit more? Mm, less than two hours, but probably a little bit more than one hour. And could be in a lot of different social media like um, Facebook, uh, online newspaper, YouTube, Twitter. Okay, questions. Does it affect your performance in your job or it doesn't affect about what you do? No, it doesn't. Usually, I mean, you probably use some social media by communication but a social media doesn't need to be a thing that affect your work it's like a compliment yeah it's, it's it's part of your free time we could say yes basically okay that's very important so you can see basically about the time you take for doing some things like you know watching social media and everything it's like it's normal I mean, the way it is that it doesn't affect what you're doing. That's one of the things that perhaps we're talking about. And uh, one of the things like there are some millennials that they focus about social media, TikToks. They want to be YouTubers. They want to be TikTokers and they want to do some other things. Maybe this new generation, like Generation C or the Alpha generation, the Alpha generations, many people want to be TikTokers. You ask them and they want to be in platforms. They want to be working in platforms doing working with some special content in different things and that's not bad it's good but for example we're talking about this generation that matters about millennials and um, sometimes they are criticized because they tend to be uh, posting everything they do if they are working they post they are working right now i'm working if they are on a trip they post it on the trip i'm on a trip right now with my family if they are doing something about hobbies they post that they are so they are like criticizing this generation because they post everything they say or they leave. Most of the time, people are depressed because they don't have contact with other people. Instead of having a direct conversation, in person conversation, they are shouting. And this is one of the things that the, the older the, talks about it. But in conclusion, it couldn't affect us. It won't affect us. It shouldn't affect us. So that's why. It, um, we had to like think about it. And one of the other points or recommendations given by this speaker is that sometimes it, it's necessary to stop using technology. 
And instead of like using checking the phone, you should let the phone aside in one side of the house on the box and do what you had to do without being addicted to technology or addicted to your cell phone, the applications, games, etc. So this is a recommendation given by the speaker. So sometimes we should like try to disconnect from technology. It's not bad because it's good. It's a way of enter entertainment and we can do things. But at the same time, we try to be asked, not, not to be attached to technology too, too much. And also things that aren't good. There's a, recently I was reading that people, they prefer instead of reading a book, they prefer looking for things on the internet or perhaps in social media. That will depend, right? So that's why we can also discuss about these points. Okay, let's continue about this. Next part. We have the following activity. 10 positive attributes millennials bring to the workplace. This activity matters to me because now after we talk about some positive things and bad things about people with addiction to technology, with addiction to social media, we're going to be focusing about 10 positive attributes millennials bring to the workplace. Um, I mean, I, I see most of us, most of, most of you guys, I can see that. Most of you are millennials, so you will understand what I'm talking about. So you will, because you're a millennial, you can see the, the positive attributes that the millennials can bring to the workplace. What, what a feedback, what positive things perhaps we can also uh, share right now, okay? It says to read the following article and get the most, most important uh, points and discuss in the class. Let's just give me a short time to, to share with you guys the link. But before, we're going to try to check the attendance list right now. Uh, give me a brief moment. One sec. And, well, taking advantage, I want to ask you, who wants to do me the favor to answer? Do you consider that is good or bad Spend time in technology. What do you think? Is good or is bad spend too much time on technology? What do you think, guys? Give me your opinion. It depends. If the technology is time wasting, nothing productive, I think it's bad, but is by example something productive like this class or something that are you learning about it i think so it's not bad it's a good thing to be honest excellent that's what i want to listen that's right that's right that's right so this is what i'm talking about depending the use of technology if you waste your time people say eat in a way that refers to someone that uh, does something specifically, but doesn't help. It's the opposite in that case. You waste your time, like eat all the way. So we should like focus about that. Um, Carlos Alberto Dominguez. Carlos, absent. Uh, Carlos Ernesto Hernandez. Present teacher. Thank you. Edwin Antonio Quinteros. Edwin, absent. Uh, Emerson Ulysses Monroy. Present. Uh, Jorge Antonio Sanchez. Jorge, absent. Uh, Jose Bernardo Lopez. Jose, uh, Jose Bernardo. Uh, Jose Carlos Argueta. Present. Uh, Jose Salvador Bernal. Remember, guys, to say present. Uh, it's not Jose Bernal. Uh, Josh Atilio Serrano. Present. Uh, Juan Carlos Herrera. Uh, present, teacher. Thank you. Kevin Alfredo Lucero. Present. Uh, Nelson Alberto Peraza. Present teacher. Thank you. 
Osman Enrique Hernandez. Osman. Rafael Alexander Cerne. Present teacher. Thank you. Ricardo Ernesto Perez. Ricardo. Uh, Sifrido Ernesto Gomez. Uh, Wendy Maricela. Wendy. Present teacher. Thank you. Good evening. Hi. Uh, good evening. And also Mirna Elizabeth. Is absent. Manuel Antonio Escamilla. Manuel? Absent too. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so I will show right now, guys, the link. So I want you to read carefully and also take notes about those 10 attributes, right? And we're going to take a short time to discuss the article. So you can also take notes about the most valuable points related to this reading. Um, focus, read uh, several times until you get the most important ideas. And if you have any questions or doubt related to vocabulary, you had a freedom to uh, say, teacher, I'm sorry, but I, I don't understand some specific words. So we can also check that and we know about the meaning. So if there is any word that you don't know, you are demanded to, to know the meaning. Because if you don't look for the meaning in the dictionary about the word, perhaps later you will see this word and you won't know what's the real meaning. And then you will see the word again and you won't, won't see this one. So every word that you don't know, take notes, memorize it and look for the real meaning because English speakers, we use English all the time. I know people that they don't know the word and they don't take notes. I don't know, okay, uh, maybe later. And then you see the word again, and because you didn't take notes, you didn't know the meaning, so you will see the word and you don't know about that. So if you get more vocabulary, that will be even better for you. Your English exp is expanded in the best way. So let's see, I will show right now the link. Uh, can you see it? Can you see the link? Yes. Okay, so as I told you, read carefully this article and get some ideas about the team uh, attributes that millennials can give in especially in the workplace. So we can start right now. Let's focus and practice. Let's go.
Okay, students, we're gonna like take a short time to go back after you know analyzing some important aspects related to uh, the attributes millennials bring to the workplace. Also, we're gonna take specifically uh, for five minutes to discuss some valuable points because you know it's we listen, we interpret uh, the the information, and then we expose what we understand what we think or we analyze about each uh, points. So you can also summarize the points if you want to. The most important is that all of you can interact here in the class. You can talk, nobody could be quiet. I want you to participate. I want you to express your thoughts, your ideas, and also your opinions about that, right? So we're going to like move on to the breakup rooms and I'm going to create the groups right now. Let's see, um, we don't have enough time for this, but the most important is that we can also socialize valuable details. All right, so questions. Are you ready? Yes? Yes, teacher. Thank you. All right, let's do it, right? I will um, send you right away to the break of rooms and you just have access and talk. You give your opinion about these points to talk about millennials. Let's do it. One, two, and three.
Boy. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's good. So we were discussing the, the number five and six. Yeah. Ah, okay. The pitch savvy. Uh huh. It's yes. Savvy. I maybe yes. I can see that they are very, very uh, savvy in, in the technology. It's easy for them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And even though nowadays the the IA artificial intelligence it support a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, they they uh, they can build different or make different things uh, use the uh, in the uh, IAs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is this for day? Mm -hmm. uh, and Juan Carlos, do you say that you were engineer in informatic? In, in Have you ever yes, an IA? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, I use uh, sometimes the IA for something. For for example, I need to uh, make a script for I don't know for. Uh, Reset PC, for example, and yeah. I use the IA. Uh, I I don't uh, ask for a, a programmer. For I use a IA. IA made a uh, all uh, code, and I only com completely and use. Mm -hmm. It's is more more easy. Mm -hmm. Or for example, okay. I need to do a a backup for some database or something, and. I only ask uh, the IA and uh, the IA make a, a the whole aspect. work. Mm -hmm. Wow! And I, uh -huh, I only compile and use it. Mm -hmm. Very easy. Okay, very <laughs> good. And what do you think about the other one, social media, social media opportunism? Ah, uh, number nine. Yeah. They see social media as an opportunity and we will have great ideas how to use it to capture a new market. Mm. Yes, I, I, I can see uh, uh, this is true because, for example, in, in, in the company, the, the person uh, manage the marketing department, for example, uh, she is a millennial and she all the marketing is uh, uh, through social media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it depends, right? It's positive as well, but I mean, it depends how do you use her. I met a lot of people that use the WhatsApp statement for, for, for his product, right? Yes, uh, we use the WhatsApp, for example, uh, for do support, for example, uh, as on as on customers. Oh, okay. uh, mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, she uh, the marketing management. Uh, she use the the social media and and for example, LinkedIn or Facebook uh, to promote the, the product that the company or service, for example. And she, uh, she support uh, 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 the likes that, that the people do or, or comments, for example, or uh, it's impression the, the report that like, like she showed. Show. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it, she is expert in that. Mm -hmm. oh, very good. And what do you think about the number 10? That they say that some of the of the of these people were born collaborate working in group, sometimes good, sometimes bad. A veces bueno, a veces malo, pero es lo que hay. Some good, many bad. <laughs> Uh, 
in, in my case, I remember when I was in the high school, uh, I have already four or five friends and each of us were a, a master in, in different topic, right? For, for that reason, we always, for example, if there is any homework very hard from mathematics, we have a friend that, that, that knows a lot about it. And so he did this work and he gave the copy. And, and mm -hmm. as well, uh, we have Who's another <laughs> Is sleeping out of the table. Sorry. Collaborate. The great of working in group, some good, are uh, many bad. When someone needs support, uh, there, there I am, right? However, individual is, is better than, than in group. When you put a goal for each one, they are working for reach that goals. And so when we work on team, focus only in one in one goals, maybe not all the people is focused in the same thing. Yeah, and okay. um, another depends, one that uh, 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 it, it depends what what is the activity. For example, I have a a, 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 a coworker that are programming. For example, uh, they like uh, work uh, alone, very alone. Uh, it's not in group or oh, uh, very very alone, but because they program. And they need a uh, concentration. And they have a tools. Uh, depend in, depend in the task. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Depend on what is the task. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, what do you think about the number two? Sorry, the number three, confidence. Confidence, they say. Millennials always are showing self-confidence, right? Yeah. Or what do you think about it? About it? I it depends. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, Carlos. Well, it depends the person. I think... Uh, maybe the tens and the millennials, uh, they are confident, but is is for example, uh, before the sometimes the working group or the work alone. In the case, um, for me, it depends the person. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the dependent the person, but if you compare, for example, a millennial with a, <clears throat> I don't know, the generally X, for example, um, maybe I, I think that the millennial uh, is more confident. I don't know, maybe, maybe they, uh, it is because it's more young, maybe. Uh, but uh, I I I can see is more fun. Mm -hmm. 
maybe because are young. If, when you are young, you are, I don't know, how do you say, atrevido. Mm -hmm. They take some risk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because in that case, I mean, they them are confident. However, sometimes they are not in the right way, but they are confident, and that's that's good. <laughs> oh, look at the chat. Bold. Okay, thank you, teacher. They are in bold. Okay. Uh, they are bold. Okay. And in this number two, we were discussing about that, that them are specialists on that. However, the, the, the C generation is more specialist in the communication channels. That's my opinion. Yes, I, I think so. Mm -hmm. For example, the, the millennials have the more social media, more channels. Uh, for example, in, in, in my case, I don't use uh, uh, many social media or channels. For me, I prefer a call <laughs> the phone or, I don't know, a, a communicate a, to, for example, WhatsApp only, uh, but they have a, a Instagram, TikTok, uh, Facebook, uh, Telegram, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they use uh, different channels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I prefer only one or two or two only. Yeah, in my case, too. They are habilidosos. I don't know. They are habilidosos. They have some skills. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and your job, uh, there are uh, much millennials. Where? In my case. Yes. In, in, in my case, I am the youngest from my team. However, in the company, there is a lot of people that is younger than me. But in a specific, in my in my department, I am the youngest. So the other co-workers have a lot of years that have been working in the same company already 30 years. 33, one of them. Baby boomers. Yes, more millennial. than my life. <laughs> I tell them. <laughs> but you are millennial or, or not? Yes, yes. Ah, okay. Wow. But most, but the other co workers, they are baby boomers. Baby, yes. <laughs> <laughs> baby boomers. Yeah. Baby boomers. Uh -huh, but we're uh, nice 40 people. Years <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but are nice people. I cannot tell anything negative from them. They are then act like a youngest. They yeah. have TikTok, Insta, Facebook, and, and I only have Facebook and WhatsApp. <laughs> In your case, uh, do you prefer millennials or <laughs> baby boomers? Um, <laughs> baby boomers are very responsible. For for my case. Because I don't yeah, have the experience so. that working with millennial in my in my team. Okay, we're back. Um, after you know having a great conversations related to you know talking about you know millennials, and there were some very interesting points that we were socializing related to each one. There are some specific characteristics 
um, given by each, well, in that case, the level of confidence, that's one. Uh, confidence is important, especially um, most of the most of the time, millennials represent confidence about something that they can do. For example, you say, okay, we had to work in this activity. And also millennials, they never say, I can't. They also, they do a lot of things. They most of the time get confidence about they can do everything. And this is a good advantage, by the way. We also, well, we were talking about innovation, right? This is one of the advantages working. I was listening to one of the groups talking about and that millennials are very creative in a way. And also they are very responsible, right? The innovation is very fabulous. Look for something new, new ideas. Not all ideas, the new ideas like uh, the enthusiasms or being positive is always is always a very nice part that people should be very positive, right? Uh, adaptable under different circumstances or situations that could affect them or like they could experience, they also are uh, able to do a great job, right? Um, and also they we compare baby boomers and also uh, millennials, but baby boomers also are responsible. One student said that. Uh, adaptable under different circumstances or positions, they try to reach their goals, focusing about the needs. Social media opportunities, oh uh, yeah, um, it's yeah, this is an advantage, right? If there is something that they need to look for, they're good for technology. They don't have problems with that, and also they can look for things, adapt to changes, uh, production and everything, and collaborative. Um, this is another positive thing because uh, millennials are, you know, fresh, fresh, great ideas, uh, with a good sense of humor that also they have. Uh, so there are valuable attributes that they, they also can give to the company. And also they are uh, entrepreneurs thinkers. We were discussing, as you did with your classmates, that um, they try to think be the number one. Show that the reasons they are there is not coincidence, that they can go beyond, that they can reach their goals and expectations. So that's why it's very important to focus about the 10 positive attributes to millennials and bring it uh, to the workplace. And uh, also we're gonna see, um, let's check. Wendy, uh, hi, Wendy. Do you listen to me, Wendy? Hello, Wendy? I see she's not, uh, perhaps the connection. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so, well, we're gonna be like um, going on to the next part. And also we're talking about a review about the Corality Pairs. Also, I want you to focus about the following link. One second, one second, please. One second. And we have a review. I will share right now, guys, a link of the following topic. I cannot share it with you guys, this one in my screen. So what I want you to do is to check this file and check with me this part, okay? And we're gonna have a short review of the topic. Okay, I'm showing you right now the, the link. So please try to open it. And also we're gonna have a review of this one. One second. Okay, um, we're talking about correlative conjunctions. So we, we saw that in, during this second and third level, and we're gonna try to have a short review. Please uh, tell me if you have opened this link. Don't teacher. Yes? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. this part. So when we talk about the correlative conjunctions, because it's a review, 
Some conjunctions are used in pairs all the time, like either or, neither or, not only, but also. And also the goal is to match ideas, right? And we said, for example, the use of either and or, right? Either take it all or leave it. You must either obey my instructions or quit. This is like, I mean, you give, I give you some instructions. Either you or, or Carlos will have to do it. So in that case, we're saying that we use either and or to talk about choices. We talk about choices, but also we have the use of neither and nor, right? Neither is the negative form. This is to com compare two things in the negative form. This is one of the things that we were discussing in the, in the activities, okay? So we saw some examples like the ones we have here. Uh, either, uh, well, I will neither take it nor leave it. So talking about some negative things. I will neither obey your instructions nor quit. I mean, so that's mean that this person won't do it. And that is uh, one of the points about instructions. Look at the next one. Look at the next one. And neither he not, nor I will do it. So always talking about the negative form in this case. And also we have the next that is not only, but also. We are like comparing. They not only looked the shop but also set it on fire look at this next not only alice but mary also came and he visited not only europe but also america and the next note that also it's sometimes omitted so it's not necessary at all right and that's one of the points. Let's see. Next, we have also whether or or, right? And we can also check that one. I don't know whether I should stay or leave, like talking about choices, okay? And that is the thing, whether he comes or not makes no difference at all. So you can also compare in that case, whether or. And then we started the use of uh, both and, right? She's both beautiful and intelligent when both have the same characteristics. Oh, he's both educated and cultured. And the next one, both John and Peter participated in the program. So both of them, right? So when we um, compare things that are done. And then we have so and that. She was so tired that she could not walk. So remember that we say in Spanish is like tan. So in Spanish will be like tan, tan cansado, tan interesante. So tired, so interesting, so crazy, et cetera. The, office, the officer was so correct that he had to be saved, right? Those are like examples. We didn't see that one, but it's a general information about this per conjunction, so, so that. And this is another example using such that. Such was her beauty that men from far and near came to whoop her. So like talking about such. But the question is here, teacher, what's the meaning about the word such? And also in English, when we talk about such, have different has different meanings. Uh, meanings. Like for example, um, we say in Spanish like semejantes, right? O tal era, right? Um, such was her beauty. That we say in Spanish, eh, tal era su belleza que los hombres de 
de muy lejos y cercanos venían a verla, right? Uh, you know, to, well, to encourage her to see her. So, so such was, such tal, right? Such was. And also we have no sooner. This is like we say in Spanish, no tan pronto, right? Y then, right? No sooner did he uh, tiger appear, tiger appear, then he uh, shut it down. Or not sooner uh, had she read the letter, then she burst into tears. So those like no sooner, such as, and so that, we haven't seen it before. But for general information, this can help you to, um, you know, to, to know about that, especially in per conjunctions in the future. So we will be studying the next level, other conjunctions, other per conjunctions that can help us to, uh, to learn a little bit more. Okay, now after that we have checked the sentences, I will share the next link. And there are some exercises that I want you to do it. One second, please. Wait a moment, please. All right, guys, I will give you a couple of minutes to um, have access to the link that I'm already shared. And I want you to work in some exercises as a review related to per conjunctions. So please do me the favor to check them. And also, um, according to the structures that we have started, you're gonna try to uh, complete these exercises, okay? I will give you a couple of minutes and then I will ask you if you finished or not the exercise. Okay, so can you see the link? Yes, teacher. Okay, much better, right? So we can start now guys and good luck and check the exercises.
Okay, students, we're gonna take a short time to check the attendance list. And uh, I want you to help me to, to check this part, please. And you listen your name and you say present. Just uh, give me a brief moment. And also, well, it's important to uh, check the, um, you know, vocabulary and expressions, especially the preconjunctions that can help us to join sentences or ideas or statements in the process. Every word, every, you know, vocabulary that we learn always is uh, important and necessary to, you know, to, to try to work in this activity. It's uh, a personal recommendation that I can give it to you guys. Like try to focus the important vocabulary and expressions. And especially when we're talking about grammar structures, um, and we had to check valuable details in this part. One second, guys. Let me check here the attendance list. Let me check. See. All right. Look at this. Let me check. So just one second. I was actually ensuring uh, another slide here that is a kind of exercise that we will develop. So I can share with you right now this one. Yes, I think it's there. Team. Okay. Okay, let's check the list again. Uh, Carlos Alberto Dominguez. And then we call to uh, Carlos Ernesto Hernandez. Present teacher. Thank you. Edwin Antonio Quinteros. Edwin Antonio. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present teacher. Jorge, uh, Jorge Antonio Sanchez. Present teacher. Jose Bernardo Lopez. Jose Bernardo. Jose Carlos Argueta. Present teacher. Jose Salvador Bernal. Jose Salvador Bernal. Eh, Josman Atilio Serrano. Present. Eh, Juan Carlos Herrera. Present teacher. Kevin Alfredo Lucero. Present. Nelson Alberto Peraza. Present. Osman Enrique Hernández. Rafael Alexander Cerna. Present. Eh, Ricardo Ernesto Pérez. Present teacher. Eh, Cifrido Ernesto Gómez. Present. Wendy Maricela Ramírez. Present teacher. Thank you. Eh, Mirna Elizabeth Alvarenga. Eh, Manuel Antonio Escamilla. Manuel Antonio. Okay, let me show right now the next exercise before uh, concluding part of the class. And we're going to be developing some exercises tomorrow related to this part. And this topic is how to avoid sentence fragments. This is a very interesting topic because we use it, especially when we are talking about some statements. Can you see the presentation, guys? Can you see that? Hello? Yes, I can see the presentation. Yes. Okay, yes, teacher. perfect. I need a volunteer to read the first part, uh, this one. Okay, who wants to help me to read the first part, please? Me, teacher. Thank you. Um, it's, uh, sentences fragments are incomplete sentences. Complete sentences take complete thoughts and contain both a subject and a verb expressing an action goal by or to that subject. Fragments confuse readers because they lack a subject or a verb. 
which makes meaning incomplete and unclear. Example. A, what millennials really need. This is an incomplete throw. There is no verb followed by the information that describes what millennials need. B, having direction at work. This is an incomplete throat. Who is having direction at work? There is not a subject. Complete sentence. Millennials subject really need to have direction at work. Oh, thank, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So th this is what we call sentence fragments. Why they're called segment uh, sentence fragments? Because we need a complement in order to have a clear idea in the sentence. And this is very happen in most of the time in conversations, native conversations, like, you know, what millennials really need, and period. You see, there is not subject, but the subject in that case will be millennials, right? And um, those are called sentence fragments. But there are some strategies that can help us to avoid fragments and to create complete sentences. Especially there are some people that they think they say some things in English, but they don't complete the sentence or ideas. And we're like, I'm sorry, what do you mean? What do you try to say? What is the real idea or complete the sentence? Like having the relation at work, but we need more details to understand the real context of a sentence. When we need more details about that, we call in English sentence fragments. And now, after that we have seen that the sentences are not complete, we, it needs a complement. I will need a volunteer, let's see, to read the second part. Okay, this one. Okay, I need a volunteer to to read the, the three tips to avoid fragments and to create complete sentences. Who wants to do it? Yes. A volunteer? Meet the uh, Me, sure. Oh my God. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Let's go on this. Okay, thank you. Okay, tips to avoid fragments and to create complete sentence. Look for misplaced period that may incorrectly separate words into incomplete sentence. Add a missing subject or verb to create a complete sentence. Join two or more fragments into a complete sentence using a semicolon. Okay. You are mute. Okay. In conclusion, we need to recreate the sentence or we need to add more details to have a clear sentence. This is very easy. So if you see that the sentence, what millennials really need is love, for example or is motivation, or is encouragement. So the goal is to complete the sentence in, as, in simple words. For example, look the misplaced periods that may incorrect separate words into incomplete sentences. So we had to separate it if it needs a comma, it needs a period to have a sentence complete. Add a missing subject. So if there is not a subject, we need to add a subject or a verb to create a complete sentence. Example, what millennials really need is what? Give me an idea. What Encourage. Encouragement, okay. What millennials really need is encouragement. Okay. And we add a subject and we add a network, uh, a, a verb. So we have it. And the third, is join two or more fragments into a complete sentence using a semicolon. Uh, okay, so we can use a semicolon and add more fragments or more ideas. 
So when you add more fragments into the sentence, it will make sense. It will be understandable for, for the listeners or for the rest of the people. And now, after that we have seen, we're going to try to... One second. I need to write this part. We're going to try to see some examples and we're going to try to correct them. Look at this. Let me share with you right now this part. Okay. Okay, look at this one. This is an exercise we're going to do it together. Identify and correct the sentence fragments. Look at this one. And Nelson, help me to read the first sentence. Okay. Uh, increased engagement has a direct impact on revenue. It's a great investment that helps to keep millennials interested. Okay. Uh, look at this sentence. This is like a salad because we need to add some comma uh -huh. or periods to separate ideas or add a subject. So look at the first example. And it says, I will use the chat. Let's see everybody. Okay, the sentence is increased. Engagement has a direct impact. Coma. Okay, uh, impact on revenue. And comma, what do we need to add? Because it says it, uh, it, it is a great investment. Oh, it is a great investment. In getting increased engagement has a direct impact on revenue is a great investment. Comma. A subject. Okay. Um, like it is? It, yeah. Okay. It is a great investment. Investment that helps millennials, right? Okay. Interested. Okay, so the sentence will be increase engagement. Um, we're gonna use it here. Increase engagement has a direct a direct impact on revenues. Comma, it is a great investment that helps millennials interested. That that helps to keep to keep. Okay, look at this one. Can you see the example, guys, in, in the chat? Yes, sure. Okay, so th there are other ways, and also we can also try to uh, have um, a sentence fragment clear. Like, increased engagement has a direct impact on revenues, comma. It is a great investment that helps to keep millennials interested, right? So we separated the ideas by comma, period, and also adding a subject. Okay, that's for the number one. Try to check the number two. Most effective approach, period, engaging millennials revolves around leadership. Think about this and tell me how can we modify the sentence fragment?
Okay, look at this example, uh, the number two. This is another way to, to use, to avoid uh, fragments. The most effective approach is to engage millennials, uh, revolved uh, around leadership. That would be another way. Or you can also say the most effective approach is to engage millennials to revolve around leadership. So you can add two. So in that case, the sentence makes sense because the purpose of a sentence fragment is to complete the sentence in a better way, like examples that I hear, have here. One second. Is this one. Okay, tomorrow, because of the time, we're going to be like this one. Look at the other example. The purpose is to complete the sentence in a correct way. So um, because of the time, guys, we're about to finish. Tomorrow, we're going to be working in some other exercises related to these fragments, okay? And um, we're going to be like developing the rest of the exercises we have here. Uh, do you have any questions or doubts? Relate or any comments before leaving the class? For the moment. Okay, guys, thank you so much and have a beautiful night to all of you. Have a good night, T-shirt. Good, good night, 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 guys. Sure. Enjoy good your night. night. Bye bye. Night, everyone. See you the next week. Good night, teacher. Bye. Bye. See you.